There's a couple of things I want to talk about today. Number one, as a safety issue, what I want to do is set up a ground anchor. Here's my ground anchor. Basically, got the bar and three pins. Now, I've had this thing for a while. I've only ever used it on one other job. And it's the kind of situation where it doesn't really cost that much. It's very handy when you need it. In this situation, I need to get a pull line over in this yard here with a very limited drop zone. The tips are probably going to be coming down and grazing the, maybe the deck, the wall, the, the sidewalk. Maybe, they, maybe I'll have a few extra feet and the tips coming here. But in any case, I don't want to have a man on a pull line or two men on a pull line pulling from this direction here. And I don't really have anything else I can anchor the tree to, anchor a, a, a redirect block to. So I'm going to create my own ground anchor. We'll set a pulley up on that and the pull will be done from well out of the drop zone. So it's a major safety issue. It helps me not have to rig this whole tree out. I can knock this tree down in maybe two, three cuts here. The second thing I want to talk about is estimating the height of a tree like that. So the tree is a little bit downhill from where I, I want to go. I'm going to go up into the tree to cut it to take the top out. And so one of the things that's going to be helpful here for me is to walk off the drop zone. I know the, the distance of my own pace. I have a three foot pace when I take a bit of an extra long step, it's a three foot pace. So I'll walk that out off from the base of the tree. I'll see how many feet I have here. And then also from years of experience of just estimating the height of a tree, I know how far up I have to go to cut this thing. And there's another thing I could do. I can make an extra wide notch on that. So when the tips come down, it doesn't break off and jump forward. It actually comes down past and then it kicks down backwards. So the tips will come down and then kick down backwards, hopefully behind the, 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 tr the stump of the tree. So let's go walk this, this distance off. Fifteen, okay, so that's 45 feet right there. So I really don't have to go up that high. That tree can't be a lot more than 55, 60 feet. It just looks a little taller than what it is. But having that information, I have a 45 foot drop zone here. It's very helpful. So we're gonna set up the uh, ground anchor here. I'm gonna get up into the tree, cut the tree, using a, a number of these different techniques here. Whatever happens is gonna be safe for everybody on the ground because everybody's gonna be out of the drop zone, which is a nice thing here. We really don't need to get too crazy here as far as hammering this thing down because we're not gonna be pulling that hard. Depending on the, the lean of the tree up there and how much hinge I want to leave and all that, we may end up pulling with the vehicle here. We really probably don't need to. We could probably pull this one by hand with a mechanical advantage system. We can adjust the exact angle of the pull, obviously, with the ground anchor. We put it anywhere we want. But I just noticed, you know, this first cut's got a little bit of right lean here. I might want to change the direction of the pull on this uh, leader rec block here in order to compensate for that. And so uh, what I'll do here is leave it a little bit long. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now I got my pull more in this direction and for the next cut if I want to adjust it again I can bring it back here and make it closer to the ground anchor. And there's our tree and you can see I'm up here on this roof there's a deck here and foundation wall of the garage that tree, I don't know if you can tell from here but it, I'm going to have to cut it about 15 feet high to get it to land in this drop zone here. Got a ground anchor set up right there with a long sling redirect block here. We can change the angle of pull by changing the length of that sling. And I'm probably going to get up there, stand in that crotch somewhere, first crotch or something, and cut both of them. And then we'll just leave the, the little stuff on there. Pull that down with the last cut, the main trunk there. All right, should be a fun one. Let's see if I can multi-crotch this on the first, first row here. Okay. 
Hmm, we got a nice angle. Oh, that's a nice shot there. Ooh. Right, so we're multi crotched up there, but those aren't real big crotches in dead maple, especially, but we're going to make it work. Unfortunately, the camera work on this first top coming out was not the best. You can see the piece is just about horizontal here. It's just coming off this cut right there. The forward or downward actually momentum of the tips is taking it down a lot faster than the butt. And here's the cut on that. There you can see those nice long stringy fibers there and that open face cut down at the bottom there, which made the the notch over 90 degrees. Well, actually, that was more of a snipe, but it was it had the same effect. And here's a bird's eye view showing the tapered nature of the hinge because the thing was leaning left. Those were the nice, strong holding fibers that kept it in place for that drop. Yeah, one more consideration, very important safety consideration. When you're cutting multiple leads like that, you got two stems and you're taking one of them out, is to make sure that the, the, the branches are not intertwined. There was one little cross branch up there. It was more of a branch tip. I knew it was going to come free. We had enough pull on it and, and keep it on the hinge and it would just pull right out of there. I wasn't worried about it. But, you know, it doesn't take much of a branch if it's hooked improperly to keep that whole thing from moving. And then what are you going to do? You know, you got to destabilize trunk and... You gotta go up there and cut the, the, the offending branches out. It can be a little more tricky, a little, little dangerous. So that's something to definitely keep an eye when you're when you're falling one of multiple stems. We're just gonna set the pull line for that set the second lead with the climbing line that's already set up in there. So it's the climbing line's not set up very high in the tree, so the pull line is not gonna be set up very high. And we don't need a lot of pull on the tree. We have the skid steer here if we want to use it now. We have a ground anchor here. I'll probably just use pull by hand with a we're going to set up a, actually a six to one mechanical advantage and i'm going to show you that there's going to be a little friction in the system so it won't quite be six to one so at this point what we're going to do is just set one end of this ground one end of this pull line to the ground anchor here and the other line other end will go through the pulley so we got a little friction up there around that big crotch and it's basically going to give us two to one minus that friction on the pulling system. So that'll give us a little more power. We can pull by hand if we so choose. Locked in. Then we'll put three to one at mechanical advantage on this with a, just a block around the tree that we, like we were using before and a midline knot which will have a little friction in that midline knot too so if I go tie that midline knot right here I'll show you that one that I like to use I like to use a uh, doubled bowline 
which is similar to a bowline on a bite. A little easier to tie. Not will not lock up lock up under any circumstances at all. So I'm, I'll give you the details of that in my knot section. But this, as long as the other end of that line goes through all three of these, this will never lock up. All right. So basically, there's our three. Our, there's our, our three to one on this end. We've got one, two, three legs going to this line here, which is set up on the pulley, and two to one. So that's basically six to one. So one man here, and that tree's moving. All right, so if you can see that tree wagging around up there, you can see that clearly just with one man pulling on this system, I'm getting the tree to move, and I'm getting it to move significantly, which means it's gonna go my way, especially since we're gonna have two guys pulling on the line. All right, we know we're good. So, I'm actually going to take a picture of this hinge I cut on this last one. Very cool looking hinge. A lot of big fibers right here in the center, right where we want them, right in that heartwood. Showing there was a lot of holding ability on that hinge, which is what I wanted. And it was wide open too, so the tips came down, then the butt released. In this one, I really don't want to do that because where am I? I'm right here. I don't want those tips coming down, that butt coming down into me. So I need fairly early separation. I don't want to sail too far, but I can angle a little bit into that corner now just because of the position of the tree. I'll have plenty of room. We know from the last one that the tips didn't reach that wall over there or the edge of that deck, so we should be just fine here. So basically, I'm going to adjust the notch here, not to make it quite so wide. Now you should be able to cut these uh, notches in the tree from either side, so that's why you practice on the ground to make sure when you, you're doing it up here and you don't have anywhere to go, nowhere to run, your life's depend on this cut being a good cut. You can trust it. And here's the top view of that second cut. You can see those hinge fibers didn't have nearly as much holding ability as the first one, and that was by design.